Hi folks, we're building a Johnny 5 robot. What is Johnny 5? Why are we doing this project? Why should it be interesting to you? So if you were born probably somewhere between the late 1970s and maybe the late 80s, you might remember the movie Short Circuit. If you haven't seen it, I would highly encourage you to go watch it. It's a robot that's built by a company called Nova Laboratories to do you know, military type infantry stuff and one of the many robots gets hit by lightning and it comes alive and it tells the story of this robot going through i think it's is it portland yeah it seems right yeah i'm not totally sure somewhere in the pacific northwest and it and it meets people and has fun and gets into adventures and, and steals vehicles and learns to read really really quickly and needs input but i would have been three when the movie came out so i obviously didn't watch it until slightly later uh, in life but it was totally influential and mesmerizing. Johnny Five was just absolutely uh, amazing to me, like bigger than life. Uh, and we had the local science museum, COSI, brought a robot, nothing like a Johnny Five, but nevertheless kind of a biped uh, type of robot to our school when I was in second grade. And that to me was just the icing on the cake. Robots were the coolest, coolest thing. You know, roughly 10 years ago, I started machining, doing so more from a manufacturing and entrepreneurship standpoint. But to me, it's all about the passion, the fun, tying all this stuff together. Fun fact, Ed, also a big fan. Also a big fan, yes. Large influence on my personal interest in robots. Yes, of course. So again, a shout out to the folks at Input Inc. They have put in a tremendous amount of work over the years getting it to where it is. We're really excited that they entrusted us to a version of that to help make it a reality. That's really cool, thank you guys. They actually had access to one of the original movie used robots, completely disassembled it, much to its chagrin, and- <laughs> um, No disassemble. Yes, blueprinted it and have now made it just a, a fantastic CAD model that they've shared with us to work from. Mostly authentic, but has some great improvements for longevity that the movie robots didn't need. They have a website and a webpage. We'll throw that in the video description. Uh, and then we're throwing a lot of our resources and learning stuff on an NYC CNC page. So card here to that page, so they kind of, you know, not surprising, they kind of cheated in the movie. There was something like 15 of the versions, but some were meant to be destroyed and pushed off bridges. Some were just arms or upper body assemblies. He wasn't that strong in, in the no, real. Not at all. Yeah. They were worn out almost by you know, the time the movie was done. I will say it's amazing. They had a large budget, but no time. And they obviously didn't have the wonders of the world that we have now, CNC machines, uh, CAD software, pretty impressive. So it's both the journey and the destination. The journey, you guys get to follow along over the next, or we've set this goal of the end of the year. Also, when we're done, we're gonna have a full-blown, seven foot tall, 300 pound, functional Johnny Five. Yeah. And I wanna share it. Uh, you know, if the local schools wanna use it, or museums, or folks to help inspire folks of all ages to learn, there's so many uh, aspects that this project will tie in. Again, CAD, engineering, project management, uh, all sorts of different subtractive and additive manufacturing technology. Yes, like this gets me so fired up. Just the movie having that kind of influence on us, imagine what the robot in person right. could do to a real kid, you know? Yeah. yeah, and there definitely have been some Johnny Five builds out there, and it's pretty cool to see some of those pop up. But so far as we can tell, no one has come close to really documenting a modern, public-facing, full-blown, going for it build. The other thing I love about this project is it gives us a chance to show all ranges of accessibility of equipment. So we're gonna make some parts on things like a Shapeoko, which is a garage or bedroom type CNC machine, very much where I started. We're gonna show parts on the Tormach, we're gonna show parts on the Haas, and then we've got folks like Hermle who are actually coming down to use a Johnny Five part as an example to show some of the most high-end multi-axis, five-axis machining centers that are used in the defense industry, used in the aerospace industry, they're also excited about the Johnny Five and they're using it as a way to kind of show how Hermley normally interacts with the customer, but normally that's not a process they're allowed to show publicly. So to me, that's what it's all about, giving you guys a chance to see all these different elements of manufacturing and tying it in with everything from sim simple parts, understanding how you know, Ed's been working with sprockets and bearings yeah. to surface finishes on thin-walled, five axis parts. It's gonna be awesome. It's right now just about the end of January. You wanna share where we're at? Yeah, right now we are just about finished with the track drives, which is a, you know, it's a pretty large part of the right. robot. And a lot of the parts get smaller and I don't wanna say easier yet from here, but you know, it's, you know, 
Yeah. <laughs> famous last word. <laughs> you know, we, we think there's somewhere between 1,500 and 2,000 individual parts. Uh, the reason I don't say that with more certainty is it depends on what kind of stuff you're going to consider off the shelf hardware, fasteners you just buy versus what are we making. Uh, and that's another great example. There's a lot of parallels to the real world of manufacturing and manufacturing entrepreneurship because a lot of times it's better to just buy stuff off the shelf. Uh, like Ed mentioned, there have been some changes in uh, electromechanical hardware. We're not going to reuse some of the same shoulder joints they use in the movies, which were expensive, obsolete, and weak. Um, so that'll present some unique chances to kind of learn how do you make this guy move and you know, do we end up building a telemetry suit? Is it remote controlled? There's some safety elements to him, but there's a lot more of that. Are you implying he's not going to be alive? This is assuming, of course, he's not hit by lightning and, and becomes self-aware. Uh, yes, there's some great elements of how to manage larger projects, both in number of files and then on a timeline, uh, with, which ties into things like the Fusion 360 side of things too, which I'm excited about. And honestly, it's just fun. Like it's the reason I do everything I do, both selfishly for within our shop, but then also to share that uh, with the folks that are watching and the folks that are hopefully, uh, I'm really hoping that Johnny Five, you know, does have a life of his own when oh, yeah. he, as we starts as he starts to kind of grow. And it's been super cool to see even just the tracks come alive. It's a really big robot. Oh yeah, jeez. Uh, apparently when they were filming the um, the dancing scene with, oh I should know her name. Ali Sheedy. Thank you. <laughs> there was like some safety issues of just like how massive and powerful and strong this robot is as they're maneuvering around and it was exhausting. So, yeah. We won't be dancing with them. To the best of my knowledge, eh, go for it if you want to. So on YouTube, also on Instagram, we're gonna keep throwing out the videos as we start to build them. We absolutely want to bring you guys along to show you the successes, the failures, what we've learned. And again, it's more to me than just the machine parts. It's tying this together as a project. And we'll keep doing videos like this. So if you guys have questions about the build, about the project, we want to keep this casual and informal. Um, so post them in the comments below, uh, both in this video, also future build videos, and we'll hop back on camera. Uh, maybe we'll even do some live videos and show you guys where it's going. It's really cool to see the two tracks together. We've got the center joint connecting them. We've got some sprockets on there, and you can start to reconcile that to the CAD model, where there's a lot more detail. Some of it's just aesthetic, but nevertheless, gets me fired up. I'm excited. Awesome. As always, folks, thanks for watching. Take care. See you soon. See you.